All right, guys, so in this video, we will continue debugging why our contract is not deploying to the Gorley testnet. Uh, we, I did a couple modifications to the code uh, since you guys uh, lot, uh, since we last uh, saw each other. And let me, um, let me show you what I did. Uh, is it the, de the, the deploy scripts? Oh, here, it's in the config file. Um, so what I did is that I installed a, um, a module, uh, which is really just a, de a dependency by the name of uh, .env right here on uh, line two, and I'll uh, get it a little bit bigger there. Um, and the reason why I did that is just so that you guys can, um, so that I could show you me working on this hard hat dot config file without having to expose the actual data for the API key or the private key. Um, but you guys don't necessarily need to do this. You could you, you could just hard code your uh, Alchemy API key and your uh, Gorley private key here. Um, but, uh, you know, it, I, I just did this. I think it's good practice to set up a .env file in general, um, especially if you were to ever uh, to scale your app. This gives you the flexibility to essentially change the values that are stored within these variables without having to come in here and retype that code. Um, but just so you know, all we're doing here is just bringing in the API key that uh, I generated uh, off the recording and then the uh, the private key uh, from the wallet that I'm using to deploy the contract, right? Uh, there is one more thing I was going to say. Yeah, so ac accordingly, like me having that API key set here to another variable by the name of Alchemy API key, I'll, I'll, I'll note there that uh, that is a redundancy, but I didn't just want to like mo super modify the code and then just show up today and be like, oh, look at look at this efficiency that I added to the code kind of unnecessarily without explaining to you guys um, that that I that I had made that modification uh, to to the code. OK, so uh, I'll leave a link uh, to the uh, to the package, this uh, uh, the dot ENV package uh, in the description box below so that you guys could go ahead and install it. Uh, to do an install, you just do npm install uh, dot env and then dash dash save like that. And then that will effectively here in your package.json file install uh, your, um, or it, it, it'll have a reference to uh, that, uh, to that uh, module, right, dot env. Um, okay, so now that uh, that is all said and done, what I wanna do is I actually wanna go to deployment um, of our contract, right? So we have we have everything that uh, is essentially required from a documentation standpoint, uh, from my understanding. So remember, this, this is really just what we're working with here. Okay, so let me, uh, let me take away the directory and actually take away the, the terminal here for a small second too. I'm gonna bring the mic just a little bit closer. Um, control. Uh, that, yeah, that should, that should take out the terminal. Okay, cool, there you go. All right, so this code here is effectively what we have here on our right-hand side. Now there is, um, I was also looking at some documentation earlier and I also, I noticed something that there's a change that we can make here that, that might actually end up fixing this. Um, but yeah, either way, so effectively the, all we did was copy the code here from the tutorial and then bring it over here and then just add our, uh, add our data, right? The API key and then the private key. Okay, so now to go to deployment, um, all we have to do is to go back to the terminal and then write this command, right? And it's going to utilize this deploy.js file, which is in our scripts folder here to, um, to execute uh, a, a portion of the deployment. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly, you know, line by line why, um, uh, why this is necessary, but my, my, my guess is that essentially we have a, um, we have a we have a a token dot soul contract and uh, this is actually really a um it's like it's ethers js file effectively and what that does is it uh, it allows the contract that we construct here on at our level to be able to be actually deployed to to a, a ethereum based testnet right so you could kind of think about this as um it's kind of like the the middleman between the contract that we did that that we designed or that we copied over from the tutorial and then that contract being deployed it is just kind of the glue that uh, allows that uh, deployment to happen therefore why you know why it's called deploy.js right um so that's that's kind of my um my basic of understanding of it right now 
Um, and other than that, yeah, so we're going to go to deployment now, okay? And you can kind of think about this hardhat.config file as the the director of the de deployment, right? It's going to tell you, uh, it, it's going to tell the program effectively where to deploy that uh, contract to, what, what network to deploy that contract to, and where we're deploying it to is the, the Gourley test net, okay? So we're going to go ahead and uh, give that a, a shot now. Um, if the anticipation hasn't, uh, hasn't built up enough. <laughs> Okay, so um, so we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Okay, bring it over. And then we're gonna go ahead and run. Okay, so you're using a version node that is not supported by a hard hat. Okay, and it may work incorrectly or, okay. Huh, okay, so this is, a, so I think this happens for some reason every time I, uh, I, um, what was I going to say? I, I think what happens is it, overnight, if I like click out of the application and come back, it um, it reverts back to the version of Node that's installed globally, which is on the computer. Um, but we want to use, um, uh, it's is it NVM? Yeah, Node Version Manager. And we're going to do use 16. Okay, so now now we're using the, right, the correct version of Node. And then we're going to run this... Um, we're gonna run the hard hat command again to to deploy to the Gorilla network. So we're right, so we're right here. Just, just a heads up. I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so it says um, network uh, Gorilla doesn't exist. <laughs> I keep switching between calling it Gorilla because <laughs> it kind of looks like Gorilla, but uh, it's it, I think it uh, they like to spell it Gorilla. Um, okay, so it's saying that it doesn't exist. So it reads when I do. <clears throat> Look at that, there's a redundancy. I didn't even, I just noticed that right now. That I'm actually using two module.exports. That actually, that might actually might be affecting it. Huh. Dude, if, if that was it, if like that is really like the reason why. <laughs> okay. Uh, that might be the reason why. Okay, so let's comment that out. And, but just so you guys know, what happens is that this exports, essentially when uh, when we go to deployment, this um, all this data is made visible for the program to process or for hard hat to process. And what it does, it looks at the type of ver the version of solidity and then essentially effectively give, um, I, it, this is where we identify the network we want to, de to deploy to, right? Um, the API is what allows us essentially to be able to actually access that network. And then the Gorelli private key is uh, gives the information regarding what account, which is our account that we are uh, deploying from. So um, the originator account, if you will. So I think I just noticed that there's two model.exports, which I don't actually, I don't know if the, um, all that really means is that we have two solidity properties within the same exports object, right? Um, so I don't know if that is actually going to cause a problem, maybe, but let's actually comment that out there. Um, I can't believe that was there and I didn't notice it. Um, okay, now we're gonna we're gonna clear the console and then we're gonna deploy again. Oh, that might have been it. Boom! We just we we just uh, we just deployed, baby. Who would have thought? Oh my gosh, dude! Um, but this is why it's so important to like sleep on. Uh, what was I gonna say? That's why it's so important to sleep when like take a break or sleep on um the problem that you have and come back to it because you guys saw me struggle like crazy in the last video and it was literally just this that like these three lines of code that were jacking it up um okay well there you go this, this one's gonna be a lot faster than i thought okay cool so all right so we, we we've officially deployed uh to our um we've officially de deployed to um to the Gourley test net, which is awesome. Now I want to see what uh, contracts with the account, which I think this is our localized account. Um, there's something that I want to check real quick. Um, token address. Deploying contracts with the account. Okay, so this is, this should be, I think this will be the contract. Okay, so let's go here and let's go to Etherscan. 
All right, so we can validate the deployment. And it should come up here, I think. Um, let's say, yeah, search by address. Address, sponsored, balance, zero ether. Um, there are no matching entries. Not available. Um, let me see. I think it maybe it's because I copied it with a space inside of it. Let me see. Let me try that again. Um, so it's not saying anything, but let, let's try here. So deploy contracts with the account. Okay. Let's try here. Okay. So I think... Uh, click to view address on one other chain. Oh, I think I have to, let me see. Yeah. I have to see it on the, I have to see it on the actual, uh, test net chain. Um, okay. So yeah, you have to sp specify the, the network that you're on. Right. Um, and th this is it. So let me see in out in contract creation. So here's, uh, here is the one ether. Okay. Um, so this is, oh, this is, this is when I received the, the one ether from the faucet to the account and this is the out, right? So this is the operation that we just ran, uh, which was two minutes ago. Okay, good. So there you go, guys. Um, that's us actually interacting with the test net, which is super, super awesome to be able to see that live. Um, let me see. I want to put this token address with a different, um, See if that actually does anything. Yeah, here you go. So contract creation to contract creation. Okay. Yeah. So we just deployed the new contract there on the Gorelli testnet. So it's really important, and I'll uh, highlight here. So it's really important that you specify what you're trying to the addresses that you're looking for via the uh, uh, via the the testnet as the scope for uh, your for your search. But look at that. Yeah. So to contract creation, there's a contract uh, being generated. Um, from right and then the txn hash okay so really cool guys so that's us uh three minutes ago um yeah that's that's really 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 cool on is that the seven millionth like yeah like something around like the seven millionth block um yeah so there you go guys um all right cool that was actually really really cool um if you guys have any questions let, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. But yeah, that was effectively how we deploy our first contract to the test net. Um, let me come over here to the tutorial. Okay. So, all right. So we've now effectively deployed to a live test network. Um, what's super crazy about this is that that is uh, effectively the same process that you go through when you deploy it to a Net, to a live network, right? The only difference is that we, instead of pointing to a test net, which we're doing right here, um, we'll, we'll, we'll point to, uh, we'll, we'll point to mainnet effectively. So yeah, uh, that, that was like super, super simple. Um, I got, we, we, we ran into a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, snag there, but, uh, we got it sorted. Okay. So then there's a hackathon boilerplate project. We'll take a look at this, um, uh, we'll take a look at this in the next video to see if there's any, uh, relevance, uh, to what we're trying to build, um, or just, you know, j just to finish out the tutorial. Um, but yeah, that was it guys. Uh, thank you for writing a lot. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.